Family members of Kate Steinle testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday to address crime and safety issues regarding undocumented immigration. Steinle was tragically killed on July 1st in San Francisco, allegedly by an undocumented immigrant from Mexico named Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez. Sanchez is a multiple felon who reportedly re-entered the U.S. without papers several times and was on probation in Texas when the incident happened. In an interview on local television, he claimed he returned to San Francisco because he knew he wouldn't be turned in to immigration authorities. Sanchez's statement has been turned into the focus of a major right-wing media campaign to denounce what are being called sanctuary cities in the U.S. Presidential candidate Donald Trump jumped on the incident to confirm his publicly stated views that undocumented immigrants from Mexico are, quote, rapists and criminals. At stake at the Senate committee hearing is how federal immigration enforcement officials interact with local law enforcement. Joining me in studio today are Claudia Bautista, regional campaign coordinator of the National Day Labor Organizing Network, and Marcela Hernandez, deportation defense coordinator with the Immigrant Youth Coalition. Welcome to Uprising, uh, Claudia and Marcela. Hi, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, Claudia, I'd like to start with you. Um, tell us a little bit about um, what the media means and also you know what activists mean when you say sanctuary cities we had last when we covered this issue we had spoken to john avalos who is the author in san francisco he's a city supervisor and he had authored the due process for all ordinance that keeps separate law enforcement from immigration enforcement mm -hmm. um but uh, over and that was in san francisco but overall when you hear the word sanctuary cities what does that really mean um that usually means that um, the local the local um, jurisdiction has created um, a policy for the police or the sheriffs not to turn in immigrants um, or when um, when ICE requests for them to be turned in um, whenever that, that person comes into contact with law enforcement hmm. and so it's it's at the point of contact between law enforcement and the immigrant to not turn them over to immigration authorities yeah if that immigrant is committing an actual crime just as a, a law enforcement officer would treat a citizen mm -hmm. that law enforcement officer would deal properly with the immigrant right yes um, there that basically yeah the, the person would follow the same the same um, system in terms of being arrested having a trial um, going to jail if they if if they are found guilty um, and then after that then that's when the the, um, the police department or the sheriff's department makes a decision whether they are gonna um, whether they're going to talk to ICE about this person or not, or whether they're going to turn this person in or not. Mm. Marcela, the, um, what has the fallout been of the coordination, in some places more strong than other places, between immigration and law enforcement? How has that impacted communities here? Yeah, it's it's been really bad, specifically in Los Angeles, where I grew up. I grew up in a mostly um, immigrant community where we had a lot of checkpoints and actually a lot of mothers who were just taking their children to school would get stopped at checkpoints by police and police would actually hold them uh, for immigration to come and pick them up. So that was uh, immediate separation of families. And also, uh, I mean, we recently had a case of... I mean, these mothers must have been violent criminals for them to do this? No, and you know, like, um, you know, they were just taking their children to school and for us even... Um, we know that communities of color are hyper criminalized. So even when people do have, uh, you know, criminal records, uh, we are, you know, I think we've seen a shift in the criminal justice reform system, right? We want to focus more on rehabilitation. When people are turned over uh, to immigration, the community distrusts the police, you know, already. And like when they know they're collaborating with immigration, they distrust them even more. And we know that um, for them to be detained and then deported is double punishment for our communities instead of really focusing on the root causes of the problem where, you know, maybe we need more re rehabilitation mm -hmm. problems. But yeah, that's what we've been seeing. Like, and also a lot of people that were serving their time in jail were held up to like 48 hours after they were supposed to be released and that was a violation of their constitutional rights, false um, imprisonment. So that was one of the fallouts of, you know, local police collaborating with immigration that mm -hmm. it really you know, impacts families that are just, you know, going on in their everyday life or people that have already served their time in jail.